Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is June 17th, 2022. This video is called Born of God. It is part five of the series Born of Water. We're going to read today from John chapter eight. Starting in verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, that is the Pharisees, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, just to review, Isaiah 55 says, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. So far, we've been looking at many verses in the book of John that deal with Jesus as the water of life. And then we've looked at other scriptures as well that deal with that. Revelation, Isaiah. So 55.1, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Okay, eat waters. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So now the waters have become wine and, and milk. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? So now the waters are bread. And your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen diligently to me and eat what is good. And delight yourselves in rich food. So here in verse, or in chapter 55 of Isaiah, we have waters, wine, milk, bread, rich food. <clears throat> Yesterday we saw in the book of Revelation chapter 3 where Jesus says to the Laodiceans, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. And so we see Three other things that this water becomes. Gold, white garments, salve. And now, as we are reading John chapter 8, suddenly Jesus says, I am the light of the world. So here, Jesus is introducing a whole new concept of himself of the word of God. Now, if you go to John chapter 1, it begins like this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And so, right at the very beginning, we see Jesus introduced as the life and the light. And now, here he is speaking to the Pharisees, and he's saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, Even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from, and I know where I'm going. But you do not know where I come from or where I'm going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, Therefore, where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. So he said to them again, 
I'm going away, and you will seek me, and you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, Will he kill himself since he says, Where I'm going, you cannot come? He said to them, You're from below, and I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Just what I've been telling you from the beginning. I have much to say about you and much to judge. But he who sent me is true, and I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he was saying these things, many believed in him. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now this is a critical verse. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. If you abide in my word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The Lord spoke to Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 3, calling his name. And then in verse 7 it says, Samuel did not yet know the Lord because the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. Jesus is the Word. He is the Logos. He is the Word that became flesh. His Word has been written in the Bible, written by men, men of flesh, who wrote as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so we have their testimony on pages of paper written with ink. The Bible contains the very Word of God. So that reminds me of a scripture that I used to speak this scripture all the time. 1 Timothy 3.16, I believe it is. So, not first, must be second. Second Timothy 3.16 All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. All scripture is breathed out by God. And I'm going to go ahead and read verses 14 and 15. Paul is talking to Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So the scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation. All scripture, so all of the sacred writings, what Paul considers the sacred writings, the Bible, the Old Testament, at this time when he wrote it, that's all there was, was the Old Testament. And all of that scripture, all of the history and all of the prophets, all of that scripture is breathed out by God. That means God spoke through men. 
He breathed through men. He spoke the word through men. That word is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So here we are. Jesus is speaking to the Jews who believed, and he says, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You see, this is how we know the truth. This is how we know how to discern good and evil. This is how we can discern whether a person is speaking by the Holy Spirit or whether a person is speaking out of the imaginations of their own heart. This is how we discern a false prophet from a true prophet. The true prophet speaks the word of God and anyone who abides in Christ's word will be able to discern that. Because if you do abide in Christ's word, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Free from what? Free from sin. Free, free from deception. Free from the false doctrines promulgated by the many. But of course, the arrogant answered him. They said, We're offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Well, isn't this interesting? They've never been enslaved by, to anyone? Of course they have. Babylon destroyed Jerusalem, took them all captive, all but a very few. Even now, even at this time, they were slaves to Rome. They were not an independent nation at this time. Jesus answered them, and here's another Amen, amen. Truly, truly, I say to you, or truth, truth, listen to me. I speak the truth. Everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. So they're talking about being slaves to other people, other nations, but Jesus, as always, cuts right to the quick. Everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. So he's saying then, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It will set you free from sin. That's how to become, this is how to become free from sin. Do you struggle with sin? If you do, it's because you're not abiding in his word enough. Probably not abiding in his word at all. Because if you abide in his word, you will not be able to sin. Because the word will convict you of sin, and you'll repent, and you'll stop sinning. Verse 35, John 8, 35. The slave does not remain in the house forever. So Jesus is really talking to them now. If you're a slave to sin, you won't remain in the house of God forever. But the Son remains forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are the seed of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my words find no place in you. My words find no place in you. Does God's word find a place in you? Or are you satisfied just to keep on living a life of sin?
So then Jesus says this, I speak of what I've seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works your father did. They said to him, We were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. You are of your father, the devil. Have you ever wondered why there is no truth in this world. It's really practically incomprehensible once you realize that everything they tell us is true, is actually false. Everything they tell us in the news is a lie. They work against us in every conceivable way. They plan our destruction night and day. And yet, and I'm talking about our leaders here, political leaders, and a lot of church leaders are, are in bed with them. But you know, when you tell this to someone who says that they are a Christian, they go to church, they read the Bible, they won't believe you. They won't believe you that everything they know to be true is actually a lie. And they won't hear it if you begin to tell them. But what does that tell you? They have a different father. It's really pretty hard to comprehend that there are people with different spiritual fathers. There are people with God as their father, Jesus' father, with Jesus as our God. And then there are other people who have the devil as their father. And those people who have the devil as their father will not hear the truth. They cannot hear the truth. Now I want to take you to another book, 1 John, in order to understand this more clearly, what Jesus really, what this is all about. 1 John really talks about this a lot. 1 John chapter 1, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. Doesn't that sound a lot like John chapter 1? Well, of course, it's the same author. But, Jesus, but John, see, John is an eyewitness. He is telling you, 
I touched him. I know who this is. Verse 2, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. We saw Jesus. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light. Isn't that interesting? God is light. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Examine yourself. Do you walk in light or do you walk in darkness? But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. I'm in chapter 2 now. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. In other words, he is the one who atoned for our sins. He's the one who covered our sins with his blood. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Do you realize who that includes? That includes all these people that Jesus is saying to them, you are of your father, the devil. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says I know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected by this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So that's what Jesus said. If you abide in my word, and that's what John is talking about here. Jesus said to the Jews in verse 31 of John 8, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It will set you free from sin. You'll be able to discern the truth. You'll be able to discern right and wrong and be able to choose the good and walk in the good. Now I'm going to go down in chapter 2 of 1 John, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world... The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they are not all of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you received from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. 
But as his anointing teaches you about everything that and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. Now see, this is what I say over and over and over again. You need that no one teach you. You don't need teachers. You need to abide in the Word of God. You need to read the Word and let the Word wash you. Let the Word change you. Let the Word renew your mind. Let the Word become part of you. You are what you eat. Believe it. You are what you eat. If you eat television programs, you are filled with every sort of demonic devil, devilry. You cannot watch television. If you listen to the radio, you are filled with the demonic and you are filled with deception and you are filled with lies. You cannot listen to the news. If you listen to music that is defiling, you will be defiled. If you listen to constant advertisements preying upon your lusts, you will be defiled. You need that no person teach you the Holy Spirit will teach you as you come to the Word of God. And now I'm going to read five verses that you all should have memorized because they are critical. The very middle of the book of 1 John, starting in 2.28 and going to 3, verse 3. And now little children abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. Everybody thinks they're going to be raptured just because they say they believe in Jesus Christ. Everybody believes they're part of the bride of Christ, and every Christian believes that they're going to be saved before the tribulation hits. The tribulation has already hit. We are living in tribulation now. John is telling you here, it is possible for you to shrink back from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. That's a test, isn't it? Do you practice righteousness? See what kind of love the Father has given to us? that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. So in other words, in this flesh, we are God's children, but what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. We shall see God. Well, remember, always in the scripture, if someone were to see God, they would die. In fact, Jesus says, no, no one has seen God except me. He, he says, I have seen him, but no one else has actually seen God. When he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him, like God. Well, that's the whole purpose of creation, isn't it? In the beginning, God made man in his image. He made us to be like him. The whole purpose of creation, God did not create a robot or an automaton that could only choose good. That's why he had to give us the ability to choose evil as well. That's why we had to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, so that we would learn 
good and evil. We would learn to discern between good and evil, and we would learn to choose the good. We would practice righteousness. That's what this is all about. That's what creation is all about. That's what this entire 6,000 year history has been about. Pulling out of people who have decided that that's what they want. That they don't want to be like their father, the devil. They want out of here. They want out of the domain of darkness. They want to be made into God's image. They want to be like him, not like the devil. Verse 3, everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Now, I'm going to continue reading here. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared, Jesus appeared, in order to take away sins. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who abides in Christ's word keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Now get this. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. That's 1 John 3, 9. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Have you been born of God? This is a test. Do you practice sin or do you practice righteousness? If you practice sin, then you have not been born of God. You need to repent and you need to ask Jesus to fill your heart, to give you the Holy Spirit, to give you his seed, so that you can be born of God. And then you need to give yourself to his water, to his word. Because you must be born of water. You have to be born of the spirit and you have to be born of water or you cannot enter the kingdom of God. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Is not of God. Nor is the one who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. So don't be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but let us love in deed and in truth. Now I want to read you a parable. Matthew chapter 13. Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds. 
among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? And he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. And then going down, Jesus explains this in starting in chap, uh, verse 36, Matthew 13, 36. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parables of the weed, weeds of the field. Jesus answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. That's Jesus. Jesus is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. This fiery furnace is called the lake of fire in the book of Revelation chapter 20. People believe that it is a place of eternal torment. It is not. It is the place where people will finally learn God's law and God's word. It will be a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. I believe that people have already begun to enter into this place. People who took the jab, I believe many of those have entered into this place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it's going to get worse. And it's, it's hard. There are lessons that all of us must learn. We are now at the end of this age. It's time to abide in Christ's word. It's time for that word to become meat way past time, what time for that word to become meat in us, wine in us, rich food in us, and time for that word to produce the oil that the wise virgins must have if they're going to go into the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is coming very soon. Let's go back now to John chapter 8. Verse 47, whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered him, are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Okay, here's a man who speaks the truth. Now, see, when they said that Jesus had a demon, They were calling good evil. And that, Jesus said, is the unforgivable sin. Because they were, could not repent. See, when, when a person gets to the point where they, they see goodness, they see truth, they see love, and they call it evil, they have blasphemed the Holy Spirit and they cannot repent. And that's why there is no salvation for them in this age or the next. 
the next because they have to learn what it means. And then finally, they'll get to come into God's kingdom. But it's, they're a long, long way off at this point. Verse 50, yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he's the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, amen, amen, I say to you. I speak the truth to you. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Well, that's true for us too, isn't it? If we keep Christ's word, we will never see death. He came so that we would no longer have to have the fear of death. We will not see death because we have passed into life when we believe in him. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. If you know Christ, you will keep his word. You will abide in his word. If you really believe in Jesus, you will keep his word, you will abide in his word, and you will never see death. You will enter into the kingdom of God of God. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, you're not yet 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen. Truly, truly, I say the truth to you. Before Abraham was, I am. Do you realize what he just did? He proclaimed himself to be God. Because that's God's name. I am. Yahuwah. Some people say Jehovah in old Bibles. I am. Before Abraham was, I am. So he declared himself to be the God of the Old Testament, known as I am. And how did they respond? So they picked up stones to throw at him. Unbelievable. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. It was not yet his time, so they could not kill him yet. You know, what's sad is that if Jesus were to go into the churches today, they would do the same thing. They would kill him because they could not bear his word. That's the sad state of affairs in the world today at the end of the age.